Hey everybody, it's Jack here, and today I'm going to be talking about Big Brother 19 as a part of a rant. Um, so just so you know, I'm going to be doing it in the structure of, I'm going to be talking about Josh's HOH rain, which received uh, which was last week's, this week's HOH rain, uh, which is Alex's HOH rain. I'm going to throw in some house gets in there and see um, how I feel about them and everything um, last week and this week. Uh, along with that, I may have some side notes to throw in there, so stick in there um, for the side notes. Um, so let's start off here. Josh. Like, bro, what are you doing? Josh is just like the king of pettiness. Like, you could have had such a simple week, yet you had to explode the house being a prankster, meaning like an attention seeker. It's like, man, you make Raven look like, <laughs> you make Raven look like a, um, what does, what does he make look like, uh, what does, what does he make Raven look like? Damn, he makes Raven look like, um, like someone who's ain't even trying, let's just say that, um, cause I can't really think of a good metaphor right now. But like, you could have just made it a simple week. Josh said that he wanted Elena as a um, target. Now, obviously that um, that may not be true, but like he said it, he said it throughout the week, throughout the live feeds, and throughout the um, uh, throughout the show, the actual like tapings, the episodes. He said he wanted to get Elena out. But it's like, bro, if you really wanted to get Elena out, why don't you go to Cody and Jessica and be like, hey, I know you don't trust me or anything, but you're not my noms. I don't want to put you up on the block and I have no intention to put you on the block. Um, so, and, and like try to either say, tell them that and just like let them do their own thing or tell them that and try to use that to your advantage. Like, what are you doing here, bro? Like, what are you doing? Um, but also you have that side of Jessica where it's like Jessica could have always easily had a calm, rational conversation, same with Cody, with Josh, and it's like, well, yeah, you guys could have both done that, but you didn't. Um, but also, just a fun fact about Jessica, I actually feel sort of bad for her. I didn't, um, I, I didn't really know a lot of information about um, her dad passing and everything in relation to her winning the HOH and everything. Um, I completely forgot about that. Um, but I feel like um, that was sort of a dick move on Josh's part. Like, obviously... Um, obviously, like, she could have told him, but, like, I don't think she really would have, would have, um, but, yeah, I think in Josh's opinion, that's a dick move. Why are you doing that? Um, like, I, I just didn't feel it was appropriate, and obviously that made it personal for both of them, um, or, like, for, for at least Jessica, and then obviously Josh sort of chimed in with everything, uh, like, a lot of the stuff that Jessica said, and I think a lot of Josh's hatred for, um, Paul, or for uh, a lot of the hatred for Jessica and Cody was fueled by um, Paul originally, and then it sort of took its way and snowballed. Great move on Paul, by the way. Um, to be honest, though, personally, hashtag Paul for Jerry, because really, no offense, Paul, but your your overinflated ego and um, everything is just. It, it mimics Netta, and I just didn't like Netta in season five of Big Brother Canada. I just didn't think it was fair the way that a lot of the ways that um, and advantages she's got she got in season five. That's just my opinion, though. Um, moving forward, we have Christmas this week. Christmas was really interesting to see. She played a really small scale, um, very smaller. And everything obviously obviously we have like the sound effects of her backing up this week when she was talking to Jessica but really interesting this week uh, we had um, Christmas talk to Josh and be like don't let Paul rule this HOH and it's like finally somebody's saying something like that like I like I, I didn't even know if people were gonna turn on Paul I thought we were gonna have our cult where it's like okay let's all make it to jury and then I'm just gonna kick your butts out here and then I'm gonna win the game because that's what Paul would do with his social game which is good on his part, but also, like, when you have unmotivated people that aren't really not... Some of them are super fans, but also some of them aren't <laughs> Matt Raven. Um, yeah, like, it's just sort of... Uh, like, I, it's just interesting to see that there's a rebellion for Paul um, to be out of this house, besides, the, besides Cody. Um... Moving forward, though, we have um, Jessica. Obviously, she got evicted under Josh's HOH reign. It's going to be interesting what to, what happens there uh, 
with Cody and everything. I'll talk about that in, my, uh, in Alex's HOH reign. But it's going to be interesting because um, her being evicted, I think a lot of it was her own doing. A lot of it was if she remained calm and remained rational this week, which is, which would be a huge shocker, it would change change the game huge. Like, huge game changer. And, like, like honestly, though, too, you can see why Cody dragged her social game way back. And like her, like her game over all the way back because like she just didn't care about anybody else but Cody. And it's like, honey, this is a game where you have like 15 people in a house and you have to survive with them and play a game with them. What are you doing? What are you doing? Like you, you, like you should have a social game with like a lot of other people, but apparently you can get in too many arguments not to. Am I shocked she's evicted? Oh no. I think her social game just made her be nominated. Like, lack of conversation, lack of, like, isolation and everything. Huge cause for her being evicted. Um, so, yeah. Uh, overall, I think Josh's HOH reign wasn't successful at all. Christmas, was it was uh, interesting to see her be like, yo, don't, like, don't trust Paul. Um... Or don't don't let Paul take over your HOH like Alex did, um, and Jessica. Like honey, you should have you could have played smarter and not more, less explosive and more smart. Okay, that's what that's all I'll say about her. So yeah. On a side note, um, Mark winning veto. Um, interesting to see him actually finally protecting himself. Obviously. Um, obviously, I don't think if he was playing Vito and it was just Elena on the block, I don't think he would have won the Vito. Um, because he's, he's been having fights and everything with Elena uh, over the past few weeks. And, like, it's like a no man, chill man, flirt man, dirt man, all that kind of stuff. But more of a no man, chill man. Um, but Mark winning Vito to protect himself obviously obviously shows his morals where it's like he just really wants to protect himself. He doesn't really have a lot of attachments with anybody relationship-wise. So, yeah. Um, and also, Josh, why wouldn't Mark use a veto when you nominated his ass? Maybe. Like, why wouldn't he not? Like, any rational human being who has played Big Brother before, besides the fact that the people who have used a veto for other people that have been on, like, uh, let me try to say this. The people who are on the block, who have used the veto on someone else who's on the block, I think most of the time I've gone home, it's like, it, like, why wouldn't Mark not use the veto on himself? Like, he doesn't really have a strong emotional connection with um, Elena. And really, Jessica, why would he want to use it on her? He'd rather, like, congrats on him for saving his butt, but, like, what, are you, what game are you playing thinking that someone who won the veto, who's on the block, is not going to use the veto on themselves or not is not going to use the veto, period? Because, honey, I think I'm playing big... Like, we're playing Big Brother, but you're, I think you're playing some fantasy version of it. So, yeah, that's my side note on uh, Mark winning Vito. Congrats to him. Hey, so Alex is HOH this coming week, which will lead into a double eviction. Now, uh, last time Alex was HOH, she got, uh, her HOH was controlled by Paul, in my opinion. She didn't really... Um, although she put everybody up on the block and everything, got the blood on her hands... Paul basically controlled her for the most part of it, and that's uh, that's accounting to Paul's uh, very well done social game. But to be honest, uh, I hope the opposite happens for this HOH. Um, her um, this time around, I hope that she is willing to make her own moves that will benefit her own game because I feel like she is a very strong player um, that will be able to um, know what she needs to do in the game to get herself further. Uh, furthermore, I hope that um, this week um, certain things change. I hope that maybe she tries to push and test the waters to see if Paul would be able to go up on, uh, as a, a pawn on the block. Um, because that'd be interesting to see. Um, obviously, someone has to go up on the block and she has to pick a few people. So maybe if she's playing on black, uh, back dooring, I can't speak today, um, back dooring people. Um, she would consider maybe back uh, putting Paul up as a pawn, or, or as a pawn, and maybe potentially um, getting him out of the house, 
or using him as a potential backdoor for her not one of the nominees she plans on evicting. Um, so yeah, that's going to be interesting to see if Paul can control her HOH or if she can actually play the game to her own best benefit. Um, so yeah, moving forward, we have Paul who's playing a great social game right now. Um, I think that due to his prior relationships with um, Alex, it's going to be interesting to see if he is going to um, control her HOH like he did last time or if his opinions can be very minimized and everything. Um, I think his social game is going to start to flip now where he's not going to be as tyrannical or anything or he's not going to push a lot of big moves. Um, he's going to be very peaceful and very calm towards a lot of the other housemates. That just because um, if he does that then um, he, it would be better for jury management, which is always important during an end game. Um, I feel like he's playing such a great, um, very, uh, in my opinion, very unfair social game, and very well well done social game, uh, and everything. It's going to be interesting to see how um, he he makes it to the end or gets how gets how far he can with the social game that he has and sees if he changes anything in the pat in the next 30 to 40 days that are left in this game um most likely 30 to 60 i'll say that um because i don't know when this season's gonna end um moving forward we have cody alex being hoh is cody's best option that's probably the best news that he could get because Although he's had a rough relationship with her, I think he's the only, um, she is the only housemate that, um, he may respect compared to Paul. He may, he may not like Paul's social, like, game overall, but I think he respects it, at least. And then same thing with, um, Alex. I know at the beginning of the season he really respected her. It'd be interesting to see if he would actually try to have a, um, much more, um, and or much more pumped social game in order to move um, himself forward in the game um, with maybe Alex. Obviously you saw this week in the edit of the episode that he was going to join with Kevin but not going to join with Kevin. Obviously that's a little vague right now but to be honest I don't think it, they will. But I'm just saying that just as a potential option just because it's better for her for him to have Alex as an HOH as a person that he previously liked rather than having someone like Paul who would automatically try to get her uh, him out of the house. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens this week, especially with Cody not being with Jessica, to see if he's going to sink or if he's going to swim this week. Um, and then overall, to end the week, it's a double eviction on Thursday. What's going to happen? Um, who's going to get evicted? I can't wait to see what happens. Um, overall, though, to be honest... I think any player right now needs to realize that Paul is the biggest threat in this house. And I think it would be smart for someone either like Alex to get, get him out right now um, as a um, secret plan, which probably won't happen, um, or somebody get him out as, um, at the double. That's the only time, because it's a, the only leap of faith that um, he may have to move his game forward. So yeah, and I think Paul, honestly, too, played a completely different game than Season 18 completely different. Obviously, it's, it's because the house is different, but I think his game, obviously, being a returnee is going to be a lot better, but also because he is, um, he had a really strong social game in his season, um, and a lot of the housemates are different, um, obviously, in this season. It's going to be interesting. So, overall, though, um, it's going to be interesting what happens uh, this coming week. We have to wait and see. Um, and I'll hopefully have videos uh, talking about the double eviction aftermath. So yeah. Finally, on a side note, um, happy birthday, Kevin. It was his birthday this week. Happy, I think it's like 55 or 56th birthday. Don't quote me on it. Um, happy birthday to you. I think you're a really interesting player, really smart player. Being an old, someone from an older generation, it's interesting to see you actually play the game and play the game like strategically and uh, very well. I like it. Um, I really like your side of the house and I like your relationship with Paul a bit. Um, I thought you were going to be a really strong player at the beginning, but I'm glad that you sort of laid low. 
Now, I hope that, um, although uh, Kevin being a uh, older housemate, he is actually in very well physical shape, and I think that he could be a really strong physical competitor come the end of the game if he can eliminate a lot of the other physical housemates that are still in the house. Um, so when he goes through physical competitions and everything, um, it would be a benefit to him. The only one thing I would say um, is the days and everything. I think that's the one point where um, coming into the final uh, latter half of the game, you have to really understand your days and what happened on each day and all these different combinations of, okay, how many people won veto on the jury, how many people didn't, and like everything like that. Um, how many people won twice on the jury, like won veto twice on the jury, so on and so forth. That's something that I feel like um, that may be a huge setback to him. But him having someone like um, Alex in the game, who's um, who I've seen in on the feeds, practice with him, practice with with the whistle night and everything about the um, strategy, like the days and everything, will be a huge help for him. Uh, so yeah, happy birthday, Kevin. Uh, have a great um, rest of your journey, however long it will be, and I can't wait to see what will come with you. So yeah. Hey, thank you so much for watching this video. Um, yeah, hopefully you agree with some of my opinions, but if you don't, that's great. Because Big Brother Community is all about different opinions about different housemates. Um, furthermore, uh, I just want to let you know, um, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to give me a comment, feel free to let me know down below. And also, too, if you want to subscribe, you can subscribe right here. And then right here is a video I did about why, why I love Big Brother Canada. Obviously, that was done during the hiatus of the season, and it's back now for season six. Can't wait to see what happens there. So uh, stick around. Uh, if you want, you can subscribe, do whatever you need to do. Have a great day, and uh, yeah.